When you first set up your office, you created your own local area network, a LAN. A LAN needs an internet service provider, ISP, modem, and a router to get access to the internet. Once you connected at least one computer or another device for internet access, voila, you had your own LAN. Moving beyond that initial connection over time, you may have added your own router, switch, computers, phones, security cameras, or printers. No matter how many devices are on your LAN, by default, every end device is put into one big group called a broadcast domain. By default, all ports are put into VLAN 1. All resources are shared and available within this group. A single broadcast domain works fine in a small network, but now that your company has grown, you may want to separate traffic into virtual LANs called VLANs. You won't see these separated networks, but they may be just what you need. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain VLANs and their benefits. Next. To start, I'll explain a little more about broadcast domains. To give you a visual, think of a switch like a mailroom in an office building. When you have one broadcast domain, every time a switch receives a broadcast packet, it sends the message out to everyone, every mailbox, besides where the message originated. It's like spam. Everybody gets it, whether it applies to the receiver or not. If there are many messages sent out and getting flooded out to everyone, this can be a burden on the switch. Or in my comparison, that poor overworked mailroom worker. Limiting broadcast messages to a smaller, relevant group is important, as there are many messages happening in the background of a network that you don't even see. Having separate broadcast domains can also keep information and resources restricted to those that require access. It's like delivering sealed envelopes to certain mailboxes not intended for prying eyes. For example, you may have a server that you only want management to be able to access. In another situation, you may want the accounting server access available only to the accounting department. This process is built in when VLANs are in place. Another great benefit is that you can set up VLANs and no one needs to move the location of their workspace. Since the separation is virtual, the physical location doesn't matter. This means that you can have people working in accounting, sales, and marketing scattered between different floors and you won't need to add any extra equipment to make it work. Beyond the general process of separating traffic on VLANs, you can further customize them. You can allow one or more VLANs to communicate with each other. You can also add access from more than one VLAN to a certain resource in your network, like a server. This is called inter-VLAN routing. If you want to save your switch from having to use a separate switch port for each VLAN, you can set up trunk ports. Trunk ports carry the data of more than one VLAN. So when a message is sent, it has a tag attached for a specific VLAN. This tells the switch where to send the traffic. This is all done without you seeing any of these tags. They are attached at arrival to the switch and then removed when they are sent to their destination. Like the mailroom, all that work is done behind the scenes. In contrast, access ports are ports that only carry traffic for one VLAN. If a port is configured as an access port, it doesn't need to carry a tag to keep traffic differentiated. In this case, the port would be considered an access port that carries untagged traffic. When you configure a VLAN, you assign switch ports to one or more VLANs. This is where you assign the ports as trunk or access, as well as tagged or untagged. Instead of by department, some VLANs are set up to separate different types of traffic, like voice and data. Some businesses even set up a guest VLAN to keep that traffic independent from the rest. You really can customize the VLANs for whatever works best for you. If you're ready to configure VLANs on your network, you can go to cisco.com, click support, and then enter your switch model. From here, you will find documentation on setting up VLANs specific to your switch model. In addition, videos on VLAN configuration can be found at www.video.cisco.com. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.